I have come across a diamond in the rough. A show that is so good that it's probably much better than I'm saying right now. <laughs> 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 I'm Extra curricular. Hey guys, welcome back to Kiss Closure. And I have to say, I'm excited about today's show. It is truly something special. Extra Curricular is a Korean drama on Netflix that has a very unique edge to it. Wow, I'm really praising it so much, but with good reason. The whole show is a very poetic depiction of life through the eyes of teenagers, focusing on the struggles that they face as they try to navigate the very difficult, annoying, and confusing path to adulthood. And not just adulthood, but what makes life perfect, the things of dreams and desires. What will I be? Who will I be? What will I love? Okay. I know I'm making it sound slightly annoying, but it's so not. This is 10 years old. We always have to choose the right path. Well, I don't have to help you. I don't have to help you. It's basically the type of show that tags at your heartstrings and leaves a lasting impression. So let's dive into Extra Curricula, which right off the bat is such an interesting name for the show. The show starts off with a kaleidoscope of images that in many ways represent both the unexpected and expected monotony of life. Am I being too philosophical? <laughs> okay, I'll tone it down. But one more thought. The starting scene with the batteries caught up to me later on in an unexpected way. Basically, life is dead batteries and every single time you have to replace it. Sort of replace your thinking, replace your hopes, replace your ideology. I don't know if that makes sense. We start off with a narrator who sounds a bit overexcited. Our main character is not just a perfect student, but according to his teacher, who I absolutely love now, he is the obnoxious kind of A student who gets on your nerves and makes you worried that there's a bomb threat about to go off. It's at this point that we come to terms with the first philosophical idea of the show. The teacher tells him that being perfect isn't a compliment. It's not a good thing. One should let loose a little. And Jisoo clarifies his existence thus far with a couple of words that most people can 100% relate with. His goal in life is basically anything I get into, anything that makes money. It feels sad to think about being in a world where you can't have clear goals and dreams but who really does? In all honesty, it really is whatever comes my way, I'll go with it. And I think the show has endeared me with this start because it's something that we all face. And what do you want to be when you grow up? What kind of person do you want to be? Is there anything you want to do? Don't you have dreams, hopes, or anything like that? Then we cut to a somewhat Japanese setting. You know, the typical Japanese school rush, people with toast in their mouth, someone cursing, and our main character Jisoo being completely isolated in all the mayhem. But this transition is crucial as it shows that it really is about all teenagers and they come in all forms. We see the next set of characters, a couple of girls, someone has lost something which I already have theories on the thief and the show is very clever in hiding this. We see a bully who likes to step on people's desks in order to intimidate them. I found that very funny. If someone steps on my desk as a, an intimidation tactic, I might just break down laughing. And he likes being called Dominus. I mean, I would be laughing all day. Dominus is so, so funny. Cut to, again, another powerful quote. Dreams are expensive. My dream is expensive. We learn in a new sequence that is very beautifully laid out that our main character is an orphan. And this is a sequence that I love a lot because we cut to him lonely in a train ride, seated across a mother and her young child, something that he doesn't have. And then we see him forging his own parents' name and signature on a school document. He clarifies again in his own narration the hidden message of the show. Dreams are expensive and not for the reason you think. Basically, you can't achieve them with hard work. You can only achieve them with money. This is a sentiment that a lot of shows share. Only the rich can have dreams. Everyone else settles or doesn't succeed at all. Therefore, Jisoo has it solid in his mind that for him to succeed in life, he needs a whole lot of money that it doesn't even matter by what means.
And here is a first surprise of the show, that our perfect A++ student is actually a pimp. He controls an escort business that literally sells underage girls for sex. I mean, wow, that punched me right in the gut. How can someone so quiet, so peaceful looking, be the type to willingly take part in sex work? And not just any sex work, but of teenage girls. In fact, one of his own classmates works for him in this business. We come across Mr. Lee, Muscle Man, and an interesting dogo app that lets him carry on his business in perfect anonymity whereby no one will ever know who he is. The robot voice he uses through the app also shares the idea of him being a loner even in secrecy, hiding behind an emotionless voice. Another interesting thing is while he understands the struggles of money, when one of the men abuses a girl, Jisoo demands millions from him. Millions that the man cannot pay and since he cannot pay the price, the man who committed the offense has to be beaten up to cover that expense. It's very interesting that this person who understands not having money and being desperate is also very justice-minded, following the law to the fullest extent, even allowing a brutal punishment. Mr. 인간 수업이란 작품은 10대 친구들이 돈을 벌기 위해서 저질러서는 안 되는 범죄를 저지르는데 그로 인해서 수많은 사건들이 터지면서 스토리가 진행이 됩니다. And I was thinking at this point, how is a show going to make me love someone like him? Well, it's very easy. Philosophy. 내 꿈, 졸업하기. While all this is going on, Jisoo is in a class that lays out to him the full extent of his situation. We hear the words, the wind raised me. And obviously that doesn't make sense until the teacher clarifies that what raises people up are parents, guardians, paying for their children the things they need and giving them emotional support and warmth. Something that Jisoo doesn't have and in some way we secretly excuse the beatdown because we see a kid desperate and alone and being reminded of this fact with nearly every single class he's taking. Another poem is read out by the class and I think it fits perfectly with the whole situation so far. Titled, I regret nothing. Some see a sinner in my eyes, some see a fool in my mouth, but I regret nothing. And the morning comes brilliant, the idea of poetry that. I regret nothing. It's not the type of words you want to hear from a possible psychopath. But in a story about hard stakes, difficult lessons, and dead ends, it's something that gives the story a whole lot more meaning. And a teenager selling other teenagers for sex, giving people two choices like a life game and being merciless himself kind of makes sense. Okay, it's hard to swallow that part, but that's why this is secretly a brilliant show. Going further into the life of our main protagonist, we come across a very surprising fact about him. He's not doing this for the highlight, for the fast cars, for the 80-story penthouse and the fame and all of it. He's just doing all this so he can have an average life, an average death. Nothing too grand, just something that will make him part of everyone else. So it's very philosophical. I, I kind of love it. Then the introduction of possibly the best love story ever. Unless you've watched like all the K-drama. But I'm sticking to my guns. Best love story so far. And this is someone who appears to be the exact opposite of our lead. She laughs a lot or appears to. Has friends and is wealthy. I feel like this love story is the heart of the show. And I have to say, I love the pacing and the whole world building involved. We see the butterflies, the jitters, our very relatable protagonist, and a girl that you're going to develop a very strong love-hate relationship with. It's not always that you find a good romance that you can obsess over. What makes this even perfect is a bit of a spoiler here. I tried to keep this until the end, but I can't. She's basically the same in so many ways. For one, she is the thief who, as far as we know, steal objects from her classmates only to sell it to them later at a higher price. It's perfect how both of them seem to be struggling in a very similar way, but in completely different worlds. The two leads end up with my favorite teacher in a club called the Problem of Society Club, which is very fitting. 
And the group discussions focus on the very thing our protagonist is dealing with, sex work of minors, which he reasons that it's not about if what they're doing is right or wrong, but that if they are discovered, then they would have no place in society. It's hard to break this statement down, except if you look at it from the point of view of the desperate person. It is obvious that not that many people go into sex work because they want to, especially for minors, which is a horrible thing to happen. And if their private details were to be known, then it would be a crushing blow on their life. On the other side, should they be protected therefore even though what they're doing is illegal? It's hard to think about it, especially coming off what recently happened in South Korea. The ninth room scandal that involved taking advantage of young girls. And how much more should they have protected the identities of the victims? So I think in many ways, this show came in at the perfect time to answer just some of those questions. Especially if you consider that the person who allegedly was running the ninth room turned out to be a pretty young person, just like a protagonist. We later see that Jisoo would do anything to protect someone, even if it caught him off guard. And can I just say, Mr. Muscle is an amazing character already. Then the show ends with our two leads, one plotting something nefarious, I'm sure, and wow, it's perfect. There is a small weird part that kind of stuck with me. And that is Jisoo's love of critters. He has some kind of crab as his pet and seems to treat the black beetle he sees with a lot of love. It struck me that it represents the bird in the cage theory, but in this case, it's a beetle in a glass cage. Depending on how you see beetles and crabs, it could represent this underbelly world that is a trap in itself. I highly recommend it for anyone who loves a great love story, philosophy, and attaching narrative. As a side note, episode 2 has a lot of surprises that you will absolutely love. It really grows on you. That's my review of this amazing show. I'd really love to hear your opinions on this whole thing, so don't be afraid in the comments. Thank you so so much for watching. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. It'll mean lots, lots, lots. Thanks again, and I'll see you next time. Bye.